Welcome to the first webinar of 2015 uh, with a partner. Uh, it's good to have you here. I uh, hope you guys all had a good holiday and a good break. And uh, anyway, uh, my name is Jeff Gibby. I'm going to be kicking us off today. Let's go ahead and uh, start with uh, the legal disclaimer. It's the same as it was last year. The demonstration to today is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the company software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information software and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of the software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the next page. There's a nice, nice little picture of Avramis. I, I kind of want to talk a little bit about Avramis, Avramis is a guy I've known for years now, and he's a very valuable uh, partner for us um, in the Middle East uh, and before that Greece. He does a lot of training um, and uses Metastock and does a lot of training with brokerage partners uh, in the Middle East right now, which is where he's located. And literally, this I don't know how he does it, but he's always on the road. He's always teaching people how to how to kind of trade and he does a really good job. Uh, very, very excited to get him in here for uh, the event today. Let's go ahead and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and let him start to share his monitor. Um, so Ava must go ahead and uh, set that up for us. I'll let you know when we can see it. Okay, I can see it. Let's go ahead and turn on your audio as well. Make sure we can hear you. Okay, so I hope you can hear me now. I can hear you great, Avramus. All right, Jeffrey, thank you so much for your kind words. And uh, they were all true, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to get out of your way. Uh, I don't want to kind of ask you a bunch of questions and clutter up the event. I want you to be able to talk and uh, teach. So I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you take the floor. Right, thank you very much, Jeffrey, and uh, it's uh, a great honor to be the first uh, partner of Metastock that is going to launch the year, and uh, I feel it's going to be a great year for us traders, so Happy New Year, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining today. So today we are going to be talking about my favorite uh, methodology, the, my favorite method that I trade the markets, which is uh, swing trading. And uh, I'm going to start very slowly. And I might go for a few minutes, uh, those that are already familiar uh, with what I'm going to say. But uh, I promise everyone by the end of the session, I'm going to give uh, something that everyone is going to appreciate. So please bear with me. OK, so even though Jeff said everything, so I don't really need to talk about Tradepedia, but just very quickly, Tradepedia um, is uh, an academy that uh, we founded here in, uh, in Dubai, in uh, the United Arab Emirates, okay? And what we have done is we have developed an educational system based on technical analysis, risk management, behavioral finance, and we teach it to our students. Now, our vision is to become the leading provider of financial education worldwide, and our mission is to help our students achieve financial independence. Now, according to the other world of Sunju, the first thing a general should do to raise the probabilities to win a battle is to gather intelligence, to gather information. So, every battle is won before it's ever fought. So what, what we are doing as technical analysts, as traders, is first of all we have to gather information about the market before we can start trading them. Now, most traders agree that successful trading or investing requires three things. Number one, you need to have a method. Number two, you need to have sound money management practices. And number three, you have to have the proper mental approach to, towards this 
other two things. Now, without any of these key elements, you will ultimately fail in your endeavor as a trader. Now, what is method? What do we mean by method? So, method can be for the usage of technical analysis. It can be fundamental analysis. It can be market rumors. It could even be gut feeling, yes? Okay? Um, or my personal favorite, every time I look outside the window and I see two white birds, I buy. Every time I see two white birds, I sell. <laughs> okay, jokingly, of course. But basically, we need a method that we can measure. And let's say we use this method 10,000 times. And it was correct 8,000 out of those 10,000 times, then it's a, it's a good method. Of course, assuming that it makes as much as it loses every time you trade. So we need a method, a way to tell us whether we are going to buy or sell any financial instrument. So once we have a method, this is just a part, a piece of the puzzle. The other thing that we require is what we call money management. So I'm very quickly going to stress on this point because it's a very important point. So I'm going to tell you a story about two traders. So we have Trader A who is sure this share or this currency or whatever is going on. And we have Trader B who is more conservative. Now, using their methods, doesn't matter what method it is, technicals, fundamentals, gut feeling, uh, the birds, they both decide to buy this share. Let's say they both have one million. Trader A puts all his money on this share at 10. Now, Trader B is more conservative, so he buys half his money on this share. Now, after a month, the price goes down from 10 to 9. How much is Trader A losing? He's losing 100,000 or 10% of his capital. How much is Trader B losing? He's losing 50,000 as he only invested 500,000, meaning that he is losing 5%. Now, the other important thing is that Trader B uses what we call a stop loss. So I don't know how many of you are using stop losses, but basically stop loss means that the most difficult thing in the world, I was wrong. So why did I buy at 10? I bought at 10 because it's going to go up. It's going to go up to uh, 20, 50, 100, but instead of going up, it's going down. So what Trader B does is he takes his loss and goes home. Trader A does not take his loss because he's sure the market is going to go up. So he goes home without keeping his stop loss. Now, after three months, the price goes down to par. How much is Trader A losing? He's losing half his money. How about Trader B? How much is he losing? Trader B is out of the market. So he's only losing the 55% that he originally lost. Now, I don't know how many of you have been trading for a long time, but it's quite possible for the price to go to 1, meaning that Trader A would lose 90% of his money, while Trader B is still out of the market having lost the 5%. Okay, so I'm mentioning this because I just want to stress how important using a stop losses. So the second part of the equation is money management. It is a specific amount of money used in each trade. It's a stop loss order placed in each trade. It's the amount to risk in each trade in general. So once you have a method and once you have the money management that goes with it, what is missing is your ability to follow these three guys, right? So it is to control the trader's fear, to control the trader's greed. In general, 
it's the trader this is. So, to successfully trade, you need a method, you need the money management that goes with it, and you need to have the discipline to stick to your method and your money management. Once you can do that, then you can make money. Now, before I very quickly go on to the method that I want to give you today, I want us to agree on a few things. The first thing I want us to agree on is that technical analysis is 100% correct. What do you think? Type for me. <laughs> okay, so let's see what answers do we have here. <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, so, what I want to say is that technical analysis is not 100% correct. Okay, not 70%, yeah, that's a number, but definitely it's not 100% correct. Now, the second thing I want us to agree is that technical analysis does not work in the, let's say, SP. Of course, technical analysis works everywhere, and if you know everything there is to know about technical analysis, you will make millions. What do you think about this one? Well, actually, it's also not the case. Even if you know everything that is to know about technical analysis, you will not make millions. Why? Because technical analysis is just the method and it's not 100% correct. So what you need is to have a method, money management, and the discipline to follow those two and then you can make money. All right, so this is just a small introduction that I wanted uh, for everyone to do. And now very quickly, I'm going to talk about technical analysis and uh, how we can use it. So what is technical analysis? It is the study of market action through the use of charts for the purpose of forecasting future price trends. Now, as I don't know uh, how many of you uh, are familiar with Japanese candles, I'm very quickly going to explain how uh, they are created. So let's say every day this instrument has an opening price in the market, which is 132, and then during the day it goes up to 132 and a half, which is the high of the day, to then come down to 131, which is the low of the day, and finally close the day at 151 and a half. So this is market action. This is what happened uh, during uh, the day. So uh, is there an issue with the audio? Okay, I'll continue and uh, you can uh, tell me later. So here, what do we have? So what? How the way we create the candlestick is uh, by taking the open of the day and then taking the close of the day and drawing a box. Now, this box is called the body of the candle and then the high and the low, we show them by vertical lines from the body to the high and from the body to the low. And thus we have created and we have created this candlestick. Now, let me try and adjust a little the sound that some people are hearing an echo. Alright, so hope this will improve things and let me continue. So the way we separate a candle is by the candle color. We have a, a green candle when the close is higher than the open. And we call this a bullish candle. And we have a red candle 
for a bearish candle when the close is lower uh, than the open. Okay, so there seems to be a lot of sound issue. And uh, I, um, I don't know, Jeffrey, if uh, there's an issue from your side. Um, but quite some people seem to have a problem. So let me try it again. Okay, so we have the candles. Okay, Stuart, and now we are going to the beep. I told you that uh, you have to bear with me. And now the beep is coming. So I'm glad you can hear me again. And now I'm very quickly going to uh, explain about the beef and the method that Stuart very well has put it. So the first thing that we have to do, and the reason we talked about candlesticks, is that they help us to identify the threats. Now, markets don't move in a straight line, but they are moving with zigzags. And it's the direction of those peaks and troughs that create a, a trend. So, an uptrend is a series of successively higher peaks and troughs, and a downtrend is just the opposite, a series of declining peaks and troughs. Now, horizontal peaks and troughs would identify a sideways or range size trend. Now, so I've read a lot of books, and all the books mention that uh, to identify the trend, you need to know the tops and the bottoms. But in that, none of those books have I read how to truly identify a top and a bottom. So what I am going to show you in a while is a way to find the tops and the bottoms in the market. So now we are here. When the market is going up, it's going up with green candles, right? And then when the market comes down, it comes down obviously with red candles. So here, if we have two, at least two red candles, then we can go back and we can call this is a peak. Now, after the market comes down and then starts going up again, and we see at least two green candles, then we can say that we have a bottom. After the market goes up again, and we see not one like we have here, but two, at least two red candles, then we can say that we have our second top. And once the market goes down, and then we see again at least two green candles, then we can say that we have our next bottom. Now, Dow, who is the father of technical analysis, more than 100 years ago, he said that from the moment I have a top higher than the previous top and a bottom higher than the previous bottom, then from the moment I go above this top here, then I have an uptrend. And do you know for how long an uptrend is going to continue? So from the moment I identify an uptrend, I want you to pay a lot of attention here. From the moment I identify an uptrend, this uptrend is going to continue going up forever. So we are going to continue having higher tops and higher bottoms. And as long as this continues, then we have an uptrend. Now, the tool I'm going to show you is going to help you identify the tops and the bottoms in the market. So it's going to use the logic that we have developed, the two candles I told you plus a few other rules, to help you identify the tops and the bottoms. So if we go back to our favorite meta stock here, and I'm going to show you how we do it, it's better. 
So here I have gold. And here I'm going to come and find a proprietary tool that we call a granny swing. Okay? That is our own uh, swing. And we are going to attach it to the track. I like to make it blue and I like to make it thick. And what this is doing, it is identifying the tops and the bottoms for us. So, according to the logic that we discussed just before, when did this market go into an uptrend? Okay, so we start from here and it was going up. So, this is a top, right? So, when we go down, when the blue line goes down, it means this is a top. And here we have a bottom, and here we have another top, and here we have another bottom. So just to make it clearer, so here we have top or peak, top one. Here we have bottom one and then we have top two and here we have bottom two now so according to our explanation of before from the moment we go above this top here then we have one top higher than the previous one, one bottom higher than the previous one. So that means that we are going to have an uptrend. So officially here, we have an uptrend. And if this is not forever, then I don't know what is. So you see, each top is higher than the previous top and each bottom is higher than the previous bottom and we came all the way up to from 400 to almost 2000. So we are going to see uh, what happened afterwards in a while. So this is how we identify an uptrend. So now we are going to very quickly because I know everyone is anxious to go into the use of the thing, how we identify a downtrend, right? So a downtrend is basically the opposite. So when we have lower peaks and lower troughs, to, to be exact, from the moment we go below the second trough, then we expect that this market is going to continue going down, and from the moment we identify a downtrend, for how long is this going to continue going down, we said? It's going to continue going down forever. And, of course, horizontal peaks and troughs will identify a range pattern. So, uh, what we have done here is we have created this tool that is helping us identify the correct tops and bottoms in the market and subsequently find the trend direction. So for example, here what we have, we have bottom one, top one, bottom two, top two. So from the moment we went below this level here, we are officially over here in a down. And the market continued going down. Now, why is it so important to identify a trend? It is so important because there are three decisions confronting a trader. When to buy, so you are only allowed to buy if you have an uptrend. When to sell or go short, and you are only allowed to do that if you have a downtrend. And you do nothing if it is a rent. Right? So, we use this to identify the direction we are going to go. So, a trend is assumed to be in effect until it gives definite signals that it has reversed. Hence, the trend is your friend. Never go against 
the term. So by following trends over different time frames, traders can increase their profit-making opportunity in trending markets and stay away from markets when they are not trending. Now look at this. Now I'm going to show you when the trend reverses, which is actually the methodology that I want to give you today to trade the markets. So now look at this. As we said before, from the moment I have two peaks and two troughs higher than each other, then I have an action. And what do I expect this action to do? We said I expect it to continue going up forever until this thing happens here. So what happens here? Here we have the failure to break the resistance and make a new high. Now, so the sequence of higher tops and higher bottoms has been changed because I no longer have higher peaks. I still have, however, higher drops until the price goes below the last bottom here, which is actually my swing level. So from the moment the market goes below these levels here, then there we go short. So if we go back to the example that we were looking at before, actually let's see the, the one for down. So we were going up, tra -la -la, tra -la -la, everyone is happy, everyone is making money, we expect it to continue going up forever. And then here, what happens here? Here is the first time in all this uptrend that the market fails to make a new high. So what we do is we get ready. And the moment the market goes below this level, the uptrend is completely destroyed. Because I know from this point here, I no longer have higher tops because this top is lower than the previous one. The moment I go below the last bottom, then I will no longer have higher bottoms. Okay? So, the moment we go below this level here, it means that I go short because I have a formation that is called a failure swing. Failure to go higher and the swing to go lower. So you go short at 1,520 and the market is currently at 1,210. That's not about profit. Now, of course, the opposite case is once I have a downtrend and I go up and then I come down. What do I expect the market to do here? I expect the market to continue going down. Only if I see a bottom higher than the previous board, signifying the failure to go lower, then I get ready. And what do I say? Okay, I have the failure to go lower. That means that the moment the market goes above the last stop this time, then this downtrend is destroyed. Why? Because from the moment I have a bottom higher than the previous bottom, I no longer have lower bottoms. But I still have lower tops as long as I'm below the last top. Now the moment I go above the last top, then the formation is completed and I can go there and I buy. So in the example that we saw before, which was the yen here, it was a downtrend. Right? And the market was going down. What happens here? Here we have the failure to go lower. That means that at this point here, 
the market failed to go lower. So what do I say here? I say, okay, perfect. The moment the price goes above this level here, then I'm going to buy because the formation is going to be complete. And there, when it broke that level, you buy, and I'm sure those of you that trade Forex uh, know what happened, right? One way up. This is the dollar yen action. So the formation that I wanted to give you today to go short or go long is this failure swing formation here. And the difficult thing is actually how to identify the correct tops and bottoms. And this is what Abrami swing is doing. It is helping you identify uh, the correct tops and bottoms. Now, if you are going to use this method, yes, so you see here, again, just to see as a blue line, there we go short, and then here, we are going to go long above the level there. Now, so we buy when we see a failure swing for up, and we sell when we see a failure swing for down. Now, you have to understand that if you want to make money from trading the markets, irrespective of the time frame you are trading, what I showed you, you can use it on the monthly, you can use it on the hourly chart, and we will see some examples uh, in a minute, okay? But you have to accept this simple thing that you are not going to be able to buy at the bottom and sell at the top. You will never be able to buy down here, you are going to have to wait for the failure to go lower and then the swing. So you'll buy here. And you are not going to short up here. You are going to wait for the failure to go higher and you are going to short once we go below the level here. I, I see a few questions. Please keep them when we do the Q&A at the end. So that's what we say, that we don't need the head and the tail of the fish. So we will never buy at the bottom and we will never short at the top, but we will eat the good part uh, of the fish. So I hope you can see my fish uh, there on the screen. So this is the way that we, the trend changes and that we can enter into a market. So let's now go and have a look at a few more examples before we move on to do some Fibonacci uh, magic. And now, uh, so let's, uh, for example, I found a couple of nice examples before. We have Euro Yen here. So we will open the Euro Yen and get to this in here. So what was happening here? The market was going up. What happened here? We had the failure to go higher. So once the market went below this level here, we go short. And since we are here, let me talk about the stop loss as well. So we enter here and the stop loss we place it at the failure level. That would be here. Some people might want to put it up there. It's still fine as long as they take a smaller position. So we now have a method that is telling us where to enter and where to place our stop loss. Now, if we now go to another time frame, let's go to the hourly. So what do we have here? We have a beautiful downtrend. Everyone is happy. Everyone is making money. Oh, and what do we have here? Here, we have the failure to go lower. So what can we say? We can say that the moment the price goes above this level here, okay, then 
I'm going to buy and I'm going to place my stop loss over here at the failure level. Again, some people might choose to put it uh, at, the, at the low there. So here we have an example of a formation that we can use on the other. Now, we have a way to know where to enter. We have a way to know where we are going to put our stop loss. The missing ingredient to complete the, the method is where we are going to take our profit. Now, to do that, we are going to use some magic and we are going to talk about Fibonacci. Now, the Fibonacci match. Now, I'm going to go uh, through this uh, relatively quickly. So, Fibonacci was a great mathematician of the 12th century. Uh, he's the one who took zero to Europe. And in one of his books, he asked a question, how many pairs of rabbits are created by one pair in one year, according to some rules. And this is what led to the famous Fibonacci series. So, for those of you that know, the Fibonacci series goes one, then one, then two, then three, then five, eight, 13, 21, 34, 55. How do we do the calculation? We add the last two digits every time. So that means that 34 and 21 is 55. The next number would be 55 and 34, 89. 144, 233, 377, and so on. Now, what is amazing about this series is that every time you divide two numbers next to each other, let's say from 13 and higher, you get this number here. You can read on your calculator. So you get 0 0.618. So if I divide 89 with 144, again I get 0 0.618. And now if I divide 55 with 89, 0 0.618 again. If I divide 233 with 377, 0 0.618 again. Now look at this. Now I'm going to leave one in the middle out, and I'm going to divide 144 with 377. If I do that, I get 0 0.382. And if I leave two in the middle, I get 0 0.236. Now look at this. If I divide these two, 0 0.618. If I divide these two, 0 0.618. Now if I do the opposite, if I divide 377 with 233, then I get 1.618. And if I do 377 with 144, I get 2.618. Now if I do 377 with 89, I get 4.236. Now look at this. If I divide these two, I get 0 0.618. If I divide these two, I get 0 0.618. Now, of course, the 0 0.618 is the golden ratio that Pythagoras uh, spoke uh, from Greece, right? Like me. So he said that when you have a straight line AB, there is a point on this line, not in the middle, a bit to the right, that is unique. Why? Because if you divide B over A, you will get the same number you will get than if you divide A with A plus B, and this number is 0 0.618, which is the golden ratio. And this number is denoted as the Greek letter phi. Now, Pythagoras, who was Greek, he also told us that using this number we can construct a golden spire or a golden rectangle to start with. Yes? So any rectangle that has the ratio of phi, 0 0.618, meaning if I divide this side with this side and I get 0 0.618, then is a golden rectangle. And I can use this ratio to create a golden spiral if every one quarter turn it moves by 
phi. That means that, for example, E over D, 0 0.618, D over C, 0 0.618, and so on. Now, why am I mentioning this? Do you know where we find this? We find it everywhere in nature. Now, this is a favorite example of mine. It's a picture of a hurricane from a satellite. Do you see how it goes? It's a spider, but it's not just any spider. It's a golden spider. Now, if you fill your bathtub with water, how can you take the tub out? How does the water go down? Uh, it goes down as a spider, but it's not just any spider. It's a golden spider. Now, uh, the pyramids in Egypt are based on fire, and of course, Parthenon as in Greece is a golden rectangle. Now, what else? No, you know what this is? This is a spiral galaxy. Um, I mean, I, I didn't measure it, but from what they say, it's a golden spire. Now, they say that uh, the people we consider beautiful, who have a beautiful body, they have the ratios of Fibonacci in the measurements. And also, you know what this is? This is our DNA. Well, our DNA is made up of golden rectangles. Now, Phi is everywhere, and you think we are not going to find it in the market which is full of human psychology? Let's see how. Look at this. Let's take an example that a trader buys anything at 10 for whatever reason, whatever method, and sells it at uh, 20. Now, when it comes down to 10 again, what is he going to want to do? He's going to want to buy again because last time he bought at 10, it went to 20. So 10 is now a support area. There is buying interest. And when it goes to 20 again, he's going to want to sell again because last time he sold, it went down. So 20 is a resistance area. It's a level where the market, there is selling interest. Now, of course, if this happens, the market would be in a range. At some point, uh, the people are going to start believing that the market is not only going to 10 because everyone is excited, everyone wants to buy uh, the Dow Jones, let's say, or buy the dollar, which is the theme of the year, and uh, they are going to buy it before 10. Do you know what that number is? It's the 0 0.618 of the movement from 10 to 20. So from 10 to 20, it's 10 times 0 0.618 is 6.18. Now, if we multiply 10 by 0.618 and then 20 minus 6.18 gives me 13.82. The most probable level for them to buy is 13.82. But for today, the most interesting thing that I want to talk about is not where they're going to buy, where they're going to sell. Because as we said, uh, we have uh, we have the failure swing method to buy. So in this example, you would be buying at 20. Where would you be selling? So what we do is we take, measure the distance from 20 to 1382, which is 6.18, and we multiply. Remember the opposite we want actually 1618, which is 10. So 1382 plus 10 gives me 2382. This is the first possible level to take their profit. Now, if they don't do it there, then the next two possible levels is the 261 and the 423.6. Now, do you believe me? So, let's look at some examples, yes? Okay? So, as we said, let's... Uh, Tell me anything. Well, it's time to do the magic. Tell me any instrument that you want to look at. Let's look, okay, let's look at the euro yen that we were looking at before, right? Now, uh, let's apply our template here. So, according to what we agreed before, we are going to sell when the market goes below this bottom because we have the failure here. And we are going to use the Fibonacci replacement, not the projection, and see how we use it. So we place it from the bottom to the top. 
okay? And this is measuring this distance, and then it multiplies by 161, 261, and 423.6. So as you see what happened here, the market came straight down, and now at the 261 level, it is finding support. Okay? Clear? And now, uh, let's uh, look at another example. Let's go to the hourly that we are looking at before. Now, what can we say? Now, I want you to see how you can have a complete uh, method to trade the market. So, what did we say? We said that uh, I have the failure to go lower and I will buy if it goes above this level. So look at this now. I'll take the Fibonacci retracement again and I'm placing it this time from the top to the bottom. And what do I have here? The 140.165 is my entry level. The 140.75 is my stop loss level. And my first target is 140.220. My second target is 143.10. And my third target is 144.50. Now, I seem to be running out of time, so I am very quickly going to go and show you that we have created another tool that we call Abrami Auto Fibor Target, which does exactly this thing. So, when there is a failure swing, so we have the same thing only when there is a failure swing, then this will appear. So you see, the red lines that you see here are telling us that this is the entry level, this is the stop loss level, target one, target two, and target three. Okay? So let's put it all together, and then we'll move uh, to the Q&A, and we can see uh, more examples. So now, we have, we are going to now take everything together that we need. Now, you have to have the ability to identify the tops and the bottoms, right? Abraham swing can do that for you. Now, so we are going down, we have a downtrend. So what do we expect this to do? To continue going down. But if instead it fails to go lower, then it goes about this level, the last top, then we have the complete formation. So this is my entry level, this is my stop loss level, and then I put the Fibonacci retracement, or the Abraham is also people will do it for you, by measuring the distance from the top to the bottom and multiplying by 161, 261, and 423. Now, because to know if it's going to stop at the 161 or the 261 or the 423 requires multiple time frame combinations and I don't have time to do that. So I'm going to tell you a little trick. How about when it reaches the 161, you close 50% of your position. And then the stop loss, you can move it higher, either to the entry level, or a bit lower using the profit you made as a cushion. And then when it goes to the 261, you can close the remaining 50% of your position. Now, the 423, you will have to leave it for uh, when you start understanding more how the time frames uh, are working together. Now, the opposite, to go short, Again, we have an uptrend, and then the market comes down, goes up. What do we expect it to do? Continue going up, right? But instead, what does it do here? It fails to go higher, and once we break the last bottom, this is our entry level, this is our stop loss level, and here, again, at 161, we can close half, move our stop loss, and then wait to see if it reaches the 261 to close the remaining half. Okay? 
and this uh, completes uh, the whole thing. Couple of examples, and then we go. So now, what do we do? We have developed this methodology. We I'm very happy that after a long time of using it, we finally found a very good programmer to help us develop it on Metastock because not only can we now see very easy and before it would take me 10 days to teach someone how to find the throat and the bottoms, now I've done it for you in uh, less than an hour. And actually the beautiful thing, of course, as you all know about Metastock is that we can now scan all the shares in any market that we want, let's say we we'll scan the Forex because it only has 36, we could scan the SMT, we could scan anything. Metastop has any instrument that is tradable, yes? So we can ask it to go and find for us all the possible failure swings on the daily time frame for the, these 36 pairs that are ready to give us a failure swing for that, yes? Okay? Clear? And I think I have made this uh, error I was telling you, Kelly. <laughs> okay. So what we see in this, uh, this report for now. But uh, basically, uh, what we need, we're going to do now is uh, I can show you that I know that the results of the exploration, for example, is the dollar again. Okay. And if I add on this one the Abrami's uh, auto FIBO targets, you will see here that so we have scanned the market and it has told us that the dollar again on the daily time frame has a top lower than the previous top and if it goes below this level here 115.60 then you should go short put your stop loss at 120.82 121 let's say target one is going to be 112.30 target two is going to be uh, 100 and Seven. Okay? And let's assume that this happens. That means that when the market reaches this level here, the 112.30, let's round the numbers to make it easy. You show that 115, it goes to 112, you make a profit of 300 points. Now, what you can do after the market reaches here, you can move your stop loss. From here, either to the entry level, which means that if the market goes against up and you hit a trailing stop loss, then you will make on half the position. Or another place you can place it is, since you made 300 points profit, you can risk those 300 points and put your stop loss at the entry level plus 300 points, targeting the 261. Word of caution, then you also have to look at the higher time frames. And for example, the weekly here is a very, very strong uptrend. So you have to be more cautious on, uh, on your target there. All right, so this is uh, what I wanted to talk about. And uh, let's move to the Q&A session. If you have any questions and we will see some more examples uh, as we move along. So uh, until uh, you do that, let me go and find a uh, look at the Euro Yen, which was a very nice trade uh, recently on the day. Okay. Uh, Michael said there are four minutes to news. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, technical analysis. Uh, the news are discounted. <laughs> okay, but look at this. 
So on the uh, euro yen here, you see the tool is telling you you should enter here. Stop loss originally was here. Target one was here. You could have closed half of your position here and moved the stop loss to the entry level. And today it reached the second target, the 261. So what you would be doing here is you would be taking uh, your profit and waiting for the next opportunity to trade the market. And of course, uh, I stand before uh, the S and the P. So if we go, let's say I found this share, LLY, and if we, it's already here. So you see, this share just recently completed a failure swing. So we should be short in this share targeting uh, this and this level with a stop loss at 73. And I think uh, another interesting share, yes, is uh, Intel I saw uh, a while back for my friends who are in the States and I have here another failure swing to go short. Have in mind, of course, that all the shorts in the S&P are against the main trend, which is the weekly. So if you are going to short, I recommend you short less money. So this is the Okay, so the exploration is using the logic of Avrami swing and the auto people, and we can scan, I'm just scanning this, that is only 36 instrument, and I can scan all of the currencies, the major currencies that are ready to, come, to give us a failure swing to go down. So we have scan and we have gotten these two instruments here are ready to complete a failure swing. They have not done yet. So the first one is the is the dollar yen and here is the target and the other instrument that was there telling us that it has a possible failure swing to go down again is the cut with the Aussie dollar, okay? And again, it's telling us it's the failure to go higher. If it goes below this level, then you go short and so on. And we can also, of course, uh, scan any market uh, in the world, yes? So we could go here and we could find the S&P, let's try the 100, okay, oops, I should do the Explorer. So I'm going to tell it to find for me all the shares in the S&P 100 that are ready to complete a failure swing formation to go short. And is working on any time frame. Yes, we can uh, also once this finishes, we can scan the hourly. For example, you see we found here uh, one share, I think. So it's going to take a bit more, and we are going to see the result so oh starbucks like the top and here we have found these shares that are completing a failure swing yes they haven't completed it yet 
they are ready to complete. So this one here, if it goes below this level, then you go short, target here, target here, and target here. And the same applies for uh, LED, we saw it before, Intel, but not on the weekly time frame, on the daily time frame, okay? And all of the other shares that our exploration has done. Now, if we do the same scan, and let me again find these that are only 36, and we go and we explode for the ones to go long this time. I don't mind the name, it's just uh, some names because we have many more patterns uh, that we use. So if we set all the major pairs here to find all the instruments that are ready, but sorry, I forgot to put the hourly time frame. So you see, there are none to report on the daily. So if I were to do again the same exploration, but I do it on the hourly, and let's see what we get. No, the real the scanning is of course a function of Metastock. Uh, it's one of the many beautiful functions that Metastock has. However, to do the specific scan that finds the failure swings that I just uh, showed you today, uh, then you need the Abramis swing and the exploration that we have created. So it's two things. You need Metastock to give you the ability to scan and you need our tools to scan for the specific formation. And you see here, Euro again, waiting for the formation here. And uh, this is the hourly. Okay? And what else did we find on the hourly? We found here again the CHFAUD on the hourly time frame. But you can scan for any instrument in the world, any market in the world. Uh, it just uh, might take a bit longer, let's say, to scan uh, 777 uh, instruments there. Okay, so this is the this is the beautiful thing that uh, we have created. So we have a specific methodology. We trade the failure swings in the market, and as I'm sure that as traders like you, uh, many of you have. Uh, let me find this one. What's the code? It's that you know the. Actually, where is the where is upcode? Let's scan. Uh, it's in the S and P five hundred. It might take a while to do the scan. Let me. So what am I scanning for? I'm scanning for all to go down. Very good. Very good. Okay. Let's start the exploration. In the meantime, let's go and see the AFPL. So I can minimize this and have it working on the background. Oh, it's a master. Sorry, guys. They are just uh, numbers for me. Wrong, wrong scanning then. Okay. But uh, let me try. Let me close a few of these things. And try it again. My internet is getting a bit tired. So, if you wanna, if you wanna pull up a chart of Apple, use AAPL uh, dot o. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. Dot o, right? Mhm. Mm there you go. Yeah, my internet is tired. <laughs> so is mine. It's, uh, it's not being able to open because I have the other scanning running on the background. Okay, so we'll uh, once we get that uh, running scan, I know Apple, right? Don't worry, play it up. <laughs> the scan is getting low when I scan all the markets, so 
it's just a number for me. Actually, I, I just put the icon fixed. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't seem to be able to, to get it because I have the exploration running. So let me try and stop the exploration. And we will find out. <laughs> Thank you, George. Yeah, that's actually my fault, uh, Kelly. That uh, I did, I ran the exploration to scan for 500 uh, uh, instruments, so that's taken a bit of a toll on the internet. So, sorry I was going a bit fast on some night, but I'm sure we're going to get up to here now. So, let's go. All right. Failure string to go short on Apple. So, our entry level was here at uh, 101, stop loss at 115, targeting 101, and then 92. So, sorry, the entry level was here at 106. And now the market is going uh, against you. Again, as I said, you also have to be aware that it's a very strong uptrend on the weekly, as you see, uh, if you see, for example, down here, we have the original failure swing, and it reached this target here before correcting down, and then we have another swing here, and, <laughs> and look at this, where the target was, so you close half your position here, you close your other half of your position here, I mean, talking about the weekly time frame, and you are very happy. And you are now maybe short on the day. So, this is the... This is it. Yes, uh, I mean, we can use it for 15 minutes or 30 minutes or 5 minutes, but you have to understand that the lower you go on the time frame, the more risky it becomes, so the more knowledge you require in order to be able to filter out the noise that exists on the lower time frame. So, for example, if we go to the 10 minutes here, oh, there you have it. So, on the 10 minutes, you have the failure to go lower here. So, if the market goes above uh, this level here, 108.10, then the 10 minute trader would buy with a stop loss at 107.35, targeting 108.50 and 109.30, and so on. Well, Stuart, actually, this is not a zigzag because if you are familiar with the zigzag, the zigzag withdraws, it has a lot of, uh, of er errors, and also, like you said, it's using percentages. It is not using percentages. It's using candle reversals and volatility to identify the tops and the bottom. That's why we called it after me, because you know, this is, I believe, my contribution to technical analysis, a way to identify uh, the tops and the bottom. We scan the SP uh, 100. I thought you said it was in NASDAQ. Uh, uh, no, it's in SP, where is it? But if it, Apple, ah, sorry, Apple was not there because this exploration is finding, look at this, stars, the ones that are ready to do it. Apple 
like like you see here, if we scan the 10 minutes, it will show this one here. But on the daily, because it was already completed the formation, the level was already broken, it wouldn't appear. We have another exploration for that, yes? Okay, is it clear? The specific exploration that I showed you, this one is finding the ones that are ready to give. We have, of course, another exploration that is finding the ones that have just given a, a failure string and also many more to identify the trends. Uh, because if you uh, combine time frames together, you manage to pinpoint the best five minute play uh, to take. Thank you very much, uh, Nadi. Okay, so unless uh, you have any other questions, let's call it a day. And uh, if you want to try out the tool, uh, you can send us an email. Okay, uh, let me put the slide here. Okay, so as we said, our offices is in Emirates Financial Towers in DIFC in Dubai. Uh, the website is there, and you can send an email to support.trekpedia.com, and you can uh, you can send us an email, and we will send you the indicators. So we we are ready to have them on the website to be able to download them. Uh, straight out. Uh, thank you, Kelly. But the, it's not yet uh, finished with the other IT guys. But uh, do send us an email and we will arrange a, a trial for you so that you can uh, you can see that. Of course, the explorations, I haven't decided if I'm going to keep them out yet. Currently, I'm keeping them only for my trading here. But we'll see. All right, thank you, Avermas. We really appreciate your coming in today.